looks like we're ready to start. I'm Johnny Yao. I'm a product design engineer at Google, and I'm here to present to you the Google implementation of ORV3. Um, so if any of you were here for Steve Moore's introduction before the last presentation, ORV3 based specification is designed with flexibility in mind. And with that, there's two options. Um, this is the 48 inch deep rack uh, implementation of option two. And within the ORV3 based specification, as option two, we've also derived a Google implementation of this ORV3, which includes two different depth options for rack depth. That includes a 32 inch depth as well as a 48 inch depth. Uh, the focus of today will be the 48 inch deep, deep rack. And this slide covers some of the highlights and benefits we see with this type of implementation. Uh, most of this will be covered in the rem remaining slides here, but just to give you a, a quick run through, um, it does have an OCP compliant feature set. It's capable of, of um, integrating industry standard equipment as well as custom payloads. Payloads that are up to 24 inches wide and even greater than 36 inches deep. Furthermore, it has a load rating of 3,000 pounds, which is uh, on par with the RV3, approximately 1,400 kilograms. Provides rear access, flexible cable management, as well as the ability to integrate both 48 volt DC power distribution, as well as AC PD PDUs. And in the last few points, there are provisions for rear and front accessories, as well as the option for rack level EMI containment. Here's the rack at a glance. For the external dimensions, it's 48 inches deep, 28 inches wide, and approximately 81 inches tall with the option for a customizable top hat to increase your vertical usable space. For the internal rack dimensions, the rack opening is 24 inches wide and covers 39 and a half OU of vertical space. The rack also has one half OU vertical pitch. And for the other characteristics, I mentioned the 3,000 pound loading capacity. If you take away the empty weight of the rack, that leaves you with approximately up to 2,200 pounds of available payload capacity. And while this rack is tested uh, for a number of different things, uh, it's worth noting that it's tested for transportation shock and vibration, pretty the ASTM spec there, as well as for seismic. And, in, and for seismic, we typically brace at the bottom, but there are provisions to enable you to provide additional bracing or supports on the sides as well as the top. We like to think about ergo and safety as well as maintenance when we design our racks. And one of the key features of this rack is the side mounted bus bar. And this is different as you know from, from the option one where the bus bar is centrally located. We like this approach because it provides full unobstructed access to the rear for things like ease of integration. This rack is deep already, and if you want to install something at the rear, it's, it's probably a good idea to do it from the back instead of reaching all the way through the front. In addition to that, you have clear access for, rear, for uh, performing repairs as well as replacements in the field. And to, to further that note, if you have IT gear that needs replacement, that's really heavy, and you might need a, a, an external um, electric lift s assist support, um, you can do that with this type of rack implementation. The rack is configurable by design. There's an assortment of brackets, fillers, adapters, and so on that you can implement to design your rack to whatever your need is. We literally have a catalog of parts that you can pick and choose from to create your rack solution. As far as the flexible rack architecture, as I mentioned, it's capable of integrating industry standard equipment, such as your 21 inch wide OU payloads and 19 inch EIA payloads. And then lastly, there are provisions externally around the rack to provide uh, the ability to integrate rear and front accessories such as security doors, EMI doors, heat exchangers, and cooling equipment. And to expand further on the flexible rack architecture, another notable feature of this rack is the ability to place the bus bar in multiple locations. In particular, 
we have the ability to have a shallow position bus bar as well as a deep position bus bar to accommodate machines of different form factors and depths. And similarly, we have adapter rails that can adapt the rack from OOU to EIA um, spacing. And in the same way, we can also accommodate deep and shallow machines. Or thirdly, you could have a hybrid solution where you combine a number of these different options, which we'll show you on this, this next slide. So here's a demonstration that we, we created with a rack solution. And, and what shows is the ability to have different power architectures and uh, power distri distribution strategies within the same rack. Um, and essentially, what we're showing here is the ability to have both DC power distribution co-located with AC powered equipment. So let me walk you through the, the photo here. So this, this photo is showing a view of the rear of a rack that has both DC payloads as well as AC powered IT gear. This rack has a shallow bus bar configuration and we're utilizing the rear space in the back which is allocated for additional cable management as well as PDU space. It's worth noting that the PDUs and the cable management are located on a bracket that's removable and configurable for whatever your product application might be. Also worth noting is that in this view, we're using two zero U PDUs. Uh, what's not shown is two additional ones on the far wall. And also worth noting is that this rack is capable as it is to support up to six of these zero U PDUs. And to finish this slide, there's two, two points worth noting with this type of rack configuration. By having the PDUs, zero U PDUs on the sides, you have the ability to maximize the payload usable space for things that might matter most to you, like compute, networking, and storage. Another benefit of this is, for example, deployment sites where EMI containment might matter most to you, it might be beneficial to have, to have all your components integrated within this, in the same rack space, as shown here. And then the, to, to tie things up, as mentioned, you know, there's a lot of flexibility in this type of rack architecture. You can create different power architectures as well with different power ca capacities for your rack, power domains, as well as power distribution strategies, which are tuned to different customers' needs and user applications. Here we show three concepts that one could employ to deliver a, a rack solution with perhaps higher power or redundancy or both. In the first example, we show how the side-mounted bus bar enables you to deploy a rack with two bus bars, one mounted on the left as well as one mounted on the right. Or perhaps the second example, you might want to have high power as well as rack redundancy or power redundancy. And so you can create two different power domains with each of the, the bus bars that you might have mounted. And then third, to kind of finish this slide, and to be able to leverage the full feature set of this, this rack design, let's say you have machines of different form factors and depths, shallow depth machine, deep machine. You could split the bus bar and have two, uh, two bus bars, one positioned in the, the shallow position as well as one deep in the rack and have, have it all in the same, same, same rack. So you know, we've shown you the ability to, to have different depths pay, uh, bus bar locations as well as the ability to have multiple bus bars in the same rack, and the benefits of rear, rear accessibility for servicing and repairs. And that's it. You can find the ORV3 base specification, the Google implementation of ORV3 specification on the OCP website. And um, you know, here at Google, we're really excited to be participating with the OCP community and really appreciate you know, your, your support and look forward to additional ways to continue to improve and innovate in the rack and power space. Thank you. Uh, question, any questions? If you got a question, Sarah at the back, if you come up to the microphone, thank you. Hey, Johnny, hope you're doing hey, John. well. <laughs> <laughs> On the, uh, you showed the three different um, types of setups. 
I was wondering if, um, where you showed the shallow versus the deep uh, rack implementation, how you envisioned connecting the two bus bars. There's just a squiggly line there. Yeah, <laughs> that's a great question. And, and you know, we haven't worked out the full details and qualified a solution for that yet. Okay. So try to yep. mention that as a hypothetical concept that's, that's capable of being employed. Uh, gotcha. Yeah. You know who to call. Thanks. Any more questions? All right, thank you.